Hey guys, let's get more news about Miami Heat, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Heat desperation trade for $160 million star would require help of Nemesis. The Miami Heat remain in an enviable position in the NBA. They have a young star big man to whom they've committed, Bam Adebayo, as well as a young scorer, Tyler Harrow, and a star-caliber two-way wing, Jimmy Butler. That's the foundation, generally speaking, for NBA success. But, no doubt, the Heat need to make a change. They have not kept up with the talent surge in the Eastern Conference in the last year plus, obviously well behind the Boston Celtics but now slipping behind the Knicks and Sixers and, at best, on the same level as the Cavaliers, Magic, Bucks, and Pacers. At best, the Heat are the number four seed in the East. Far more likely, they're a play-in team. Rumors that the Heat want to maintain flexibility to acquire another star-caliber player have gotten old, but that's where we are. They've been connected to Jazz big man Lori Markkinen, who might well not be traded, and DeMar DeRozan, who signed with Sacramento instead. One player who could rescue a bummer of a Miami Heat offseason, though, lingers on the trade market, forward Jeremy Grant. But a deal would require the Heat, and the Blazers, for that matter, to bury the hatchet from last year's bitter Damian Lillard trade talks, or lack thereof, and focus on the now. Like it or not, the Blazers should be a bit desperate to move off of Grant, and the Heat should be desperate to get him. As one Western Conference executive told Heavy Sports, I think that it would come down to desperation versus desperation in a trade for him. Difficulty in getting Grant to Miami goes beyond the poison pill keeping the two franchises apart, though. Before the Lillard mess unfolded, Portland took the odd step last summer of signing Grant to a major new contract worth $160 million over five years early last offseason. But Lillard's departure set the Blazers into the throes of a rebuild, and Grant has no place with the franchise now. The Heat would consider trading for Grant as helping Portland out, taking a bad contract off their hands. The Blazers, though, would consider themselves dealing a high-scoring asset to Miami and would want to be compensated accordingly. Grant averaged 21.0 points on 45.1% shooting last year, with a remarkably low rebound total, 3.5 per game, for a power forward. He struggled with injuries, playing just 54 games for the lowly Blazers but has turned himself into a three-point marksman recently, shooting 40.1% from the arc on 5.7 attempts in 2022-23 and making 40.2% on 5.1 attempts last year. That makes him an ideal fit at the four spot next to Adebayo. A credible offer from the Heat could be the contract of Terry Rozier, which has two-year and $51 million remaining, plus the Heat's first-round pick from the 2024 draft, Kellel Ware. That reduces the Blazers' financial commitment and provides a young asset. A swap of Tyler Harrow for Grant makes sense, too, except that Portland made clear last year that it does not rate Harrow much as a trade asset. Jeremy Grant can play, he is a shooter, he is a good, active defender when he is engaged, he is going to do a lot of things that help your team. But he is a third option. He has some big numbers the last few years, but he has done it on terrible teams. No one is going to make a big trade for a guy who gives you 20 points on a bad team and 13 points on a good one. Not with his contract. He is going to make $30 million next year, $32 the year after that. Then he has two more years. You can't pay your third option, $34, $35 million. If Portland wants the Lakers, the Heat, any of these teams to take him, they've got to recognize that. The Heat, obviously, that's their nemesis. The problem, though, is that Blazers want something in the range of two first-rounders for Grant. They're not going to get it, but if we learn something about Portland's Joe Cronin last year, it's that he will stick to his guns, even at his own expense. They're stubborn, the exec said of the Blazers. Part of the job is to be stubborn, though. 
but part of the job is also seeing your mistakes and getting out of them. Grant was a mistake. Trading him now just to get out of that salary is the right thing to do, take whatever picks or young guys you can get. Miami Heat, Kevin Love shares true feelings on New Deal. There was some doubt surrounding Kevin Love's future with the Miami Heat as the five-time All-Star entered NBA free agency. The two sides worked together toward a single goal, though, which resulted in the six-foot-eight big man putting pen to paper on a two-year extension worth over $8 million. It's far from the mind-blowing paydays Love encountered earlier in his career, but there's no denying that this new deal still means a whole lot to the 35-year-old. At the end of the day, it didn't feel like there was any doubt, Love said Sunday afternoon during a Zoom call with reporters, via Anthony Chang of the Miami Herald. Love is no longer the big-name superstar he once was, but he still has some gas left in the tank. The fact that the Heat agreed to lock him up to a two-year extension is a testament to this notion. Love also hinted that he explored other opportunities in free agency. However, he knew deep down that Miami was home and that he was always going to stay in South Beach. In every free agency, there's always a chance to look around the league and see opportunity, Love continued. But in my mind, in terms of how the team operates, who, Heat coach Eric Spolstra, is, who, Heat President Pat Riley, is, who, Heat General Manager Andy Ellisberg, is, it really in the last year and a half has felt like home. It felt like we were always optimistic that we would be able to get this done, get an extra year and just be able to provide as much as I possibly can for the team. I'm very, very happy to be back. Miami Heat have interest in former NBA All-Star. Recently, Markkanen's name has appeared in numerous trade rumors, with teams like the Golden State Warriors and Sacramento Kings also having interest in adding the one-time All-Star. However, according to Deseret News' Sarah Todd, it is likely that the Jazz are gauging Markkanen's market as opposed to actively shopping him. Markkanen has spent the last two seasons of his career with Utah after his trade from the Cleveland Cavaliers. In that time, the Finnish native was selected to one NBA All-Star team and won the Most Improved Player Award during the 2022-23 season. During his Jazz tenure so far, Markkanen has averaged 24.5 points and 8.4 rebounds per game. At the start of free agency, Yahoo Sports' Jake Fisher shed light on Markkanen's status with the Jazz. Furthermore, Fisher essentially echoed what Todd previously said. According to Fisher, the Jazz are welcoming calls on Markkanen. However, it does not seem like the team is desperate to move on from him. The Jazz are indeed welcoming calls on Markkanen, league sources told Yahoo Sports. Perhaps Utah will ultimately exact a similar offseason to that of Brooklyn, where the Nets once envisioned adding star-level talent alongside Mikal Bridges before determining their best course of action was to enter a rebuild, thanks to a massive haul from New York. The Jazz, as previously reported at Yahoo Sports, were looking into trading for Bridges, held conversations with Atlanta about both DeJount Murray and Trey Young, sources said, and were working to assemble a group around Markkanen that could have possibly drawn George's eye. Additionally, Fisher notes that the Jazz still have interest in working on a contract extension with Markkanen next month. This latest round of Markkanen trade conversations could very well just be the Jazz trying to gather information from interested teams, or an effort to solicit some kind of exorbitant offer akin to the five first-round picks, plus an additional unprotected pick swap from the Knicks for Bridges. The Jazz have so far indicated to various parties around the NBA they would still like to renegotiate and extend Markkanen when the two sides become eligible to do so in August, sources said, and that listening to offers for Markkanen is just part of doing good business. Acquiring Markkanen could be a good move for the Heat. Last season, Miami finished with a 46-36 record and ended as the number 8 seed in the Eastern Conference. Furthermore, they lost to the eventual champion Boston Celtics in five games in the first round. With Jimmy Butler's future with the team still unclear, it is important for the Heat to maximize their championship window now.
and if they can poach him from Utah, Markinen could help the team do that. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Lori Markinen? Leave your opinion in the comments.